Harold Shadeberger is president of the International Union of Firefighters. Harold, good morning. Good morning. Uh, the last time we spoke was unfortunately another tragic event, the terrible fire in Worcester, Massachusetts. It claimed the lives of six firefighters, but the numbers here are staggering. They are uh, staggering. Um, nothing prepares you for this. Uh, in our business, uh, you know, our members are trained to deal with tragedy, trauma. Um, we know that there's a sacrifice that can be made. We were just here in New York uh, when we lost three of our members on Father's Day. Uh, but nothing can prepare you for uh, the magnitude of, of this catastrophic loss, both in civilian lives as well as uh, what is going to turn out to be uh, the loss of uh, our members here in this city. You, you say nothing can prepare you, but is this something that there has been a fear of for a long time, a major disaster? and a first response team going in, followed by secondary disasters. We have been preparing and we understand that terrorism was a matter of time. Catastrophic events were inevitable. Uh, we've been trying to work uh, with the departments around this country, but particularly with our federal government to get them to focus on some additional attention and resources that are needed to help prepare our nation's firefighters for the inevitable terrorist attack. And as absolutely horrific as this uh, event was here in New York, uh, if there is anything that can be uh, uh, culled out of it, that is, th is simply thank God that we did not have any biological or chemical agents involved. Uh, we've been trying to get the government to focus on the need of first responders. The nation and the world watched New York's bravest respond within minutes and uh, they uh, did an extraordinary job and continue to do it uh, around the clock but the fact is that we need the additional attention and resources to be prepared for future events. When we talk about first responders what we're talking about in real terms is men and women who arrive at the scene of something like the first impact of that jetliner in the World Trade Center they don't stay at their trucks they go inside that burning building in many cases using stairs to climb up as high as they can go and try and rescue the people who are in danger from the flames and it, it's those people those brave men and women who then fall victim when that building collapses there's only one way to do the job that our members do for the public you have to go in and those stairwells were unfortunately filled with new york firefighters doing their job were working on search and rescue. They were working on evacuating civilians. They were working on initiating uh, an attack on that fire. That's the only place you can do it is inside. Was there, was there any thought, I mean, was there a chance to get any of those men and women out fearing that the building would collapse? I, I read some information the other day that the building was designed to withstand an hour or two of flames, but that the jet fuel in this particular case made those flames so intense that the metal simply buckled was there any idea that this was going to happen so quickly? I don't think anybody could have even remotely imagined that those two towers would ever come down as the world watched 48 hours ago. I know you met with the firefighters unions in New York. You made some important decisions last night. Tell me a little bit about those. Well, we have to be prepared to handle the loss uh, of our members, uh, their families, but our members themselves. We are right now pulling together a number of critical incident stress teams from around the country to be prepared to come in here and uh, debrief and work with our members who are under unbelievable stress right now. And the aftermath of this is going to last for months and years and, and lifetimes to come. Uh, we are pulling together uh, grief counselors that are experienced within our business to be prepared to work uh, with the loved ones of our members who uh, ultimately will uh, be lost. Um, we are also pulling together a uh, memorial fund that will be the uh, New York Firefighters 9 111 Disaster Relief Fund. Uh, we are going to end up with uh, a thousand or more children uh, without fathers. Uh, we're going to uh, have families devastated. Uh, we want to be able to help pull together the resources to help them uh, over the course of months and years. And I, I would just say this, that any of your viewing public that wants to provide any assistance, if they would go online to www.iff.org uh, and they will find the site. I would just caution that there'll be a lot of good intentions and there'll be a lot of 
honorable funds uh, that will be uh, developed to, to respond to this need, but I would also caution uh, the public that there will unfortunately be, I, I, I'm afraid, uh, some funds that may not be as honorable. This is the New York City Firefighters Union fund that will go for those families. You're saying make sure that if you have an, an open heart and you're willing to donate, make sure that it goes to the right cause. Yes. Uh, I, I should mention that I know General Electric, the parent company of NBC, has donated $10 million to help the families of, of the emergency workers, firefighters, and police. Cisco, I understand, has donated $4 million. I'm sure other corporations will follow suit. I, I would like you to just talk a second, Harold, about um, something that we saw in Worcester, Massachusetts, and something that we're seeing here in New York City, and that is the, immediately after the word gets out that firefighters have been killed, are in danger while doing their job, firefighters from all around the country get in their cars, jump in fire trucks, and head to the affected area. I just want you to explain a little bit about why you think that happens. Well, you have to be in the business to understand it. If you're not in our business, it's very hard to explain. You're dealing with people who, this is first of all, their second family. Uh, they live with these men and women that they work with. They sleep in the same place. They cook and eat meals together. And they're in battle together. They're in their own combat daily. Their lives are in each other's hands and they depend on each other for their own safety. It's a, a unique bond that's very, very difficult to explain. And when one of our members go down, uh, every firefighter in this nation understands what that means. And, uh, and, and they want to respond, they want to help. Uh, whether it's coming to uh, the site to try to actually provide help, or whether it's later when we are going to do a national memorial service, as we did in Worcester. And our international union put that together to honor those men. This is a time when you will see in this city uh, probably not only tens of thousands, but maybe a hundred thousand firefighters come, uh, their hearts breaking, uh, to try to honor uh, those that have been lost. Harold Schaefberger, the president of the International Union of Firefighters. Harold, someday I hope we get to talk under better circumstances. I certainly hope so, Matt. Thanks very much for your help. Katie? Thank you, Matt.